we're going to start off today with a little bit of an introduction to the workflows that we've been developing, um, uh, overview of the motivation, why we need these tools, what are the specific uh, workflows that we've envisioned, and then we'll have a little bit of a tutorial showing how to use the tools. Um, and then we'll leave some time for your feedback. We'd li like to hear what you think of the tool as it is, any future improvements, um, and any debugging that we need to go into. So the tool that we're, that we're discussing today is a series of workflows and sub-tools. Um, we're calling the package Build Back, Tools for Early Stage Design. And the goal of these tools is to enable and enhance architectural education and, practi and practice specifically focusing on the design of HVAC systems. So in a little bit of an overview, the build back framework allows um, for workflows and tools to help designers learn about building systems in early architectural education and to help them design the systems in early stage design. So it's a kind of a two-pronged approach. We're focusing a little bit more now on the education side of it However, we envision in the future the tool to be able to use, be used by practitioners for actual project work. Um, so as I said, today we will be reviewing the tool set, the different workflows we have currently available, and we hope you will be able to use the workflows in your classes and in practice and look forward to collaborating with you. At the end of the presentation, we'll be outlining some of the next steps if you want to use this tool in your class and what that looks like. As a little bit of a motivation, I wanted to take a step back and talk about the building design process. What disciplines are typically involved in it? And we pulled this from the whole building design guide. And you can identify many of the typical disciplines we see in the design process. Of course, architectural design, structural design, interior, sustainability. And then we move into other disciplines such as MEP and more detailed things like vertical transportation or fire protection design. All these consultants in a typical design project are working together, collaborating, and their input and interaction varies throughout the design process. You know, some are more involved earlier on and some disciplines get involved later in the design process. We want to ask another question looking at tools now. So we identify that there's many different disciplines, many different consultants that we need to enable the correct, appropriate delivery of the project at the end. What tools do these disciplines use and what happens in early stage design? So if we consider which disciplines are using early stage design exploration, we are often constrained by, you know, not many disciplines having access to these tools or having the workflow uh, in a way where early stage des design decisions can be made. So typically architectural designers, a little bit more structural engineers, and then our sustainability experts are typically going to be using tools or workflows in the early stage design. And the kind of input that these disciplines would give are for massing, building orientation, facade design, things like that. Design decisions that need to be made early on and that affect the form, massing, and spatial layout of our buildings. However, you'll notice that we are missing HVAC design, MEP systems, and other, the other elements of the building design. So we ask ourselves, does it matter? Does it matter that HVAC design is not really part of the early stage design workflow? And we're going to be looking at a few case studies to motivate this point. Um, consider a typical commercial office building. This is a Class A office building, One World Trade Center. If we do the calculation looking at a typical um, office floor plan, we noticed that about 26% of the usable, of the overall floor area is taken up by building systems. Um, so this includes HVAC, risers, piping, as well as uh, vertical transportation uh, and egress stairs. And a really important point I want to make that motivates a, a lot of this discussion is that building systems are not necessarily optional things. For the most part, all buildings need to have these components. Certain elements of them, such as for fire protection, for uh, vertical transportation, are essential and needed in every single one of our buildings that we design. For HVAC systems, all buildings, especially commercial office buildings, really do need some sort of HVAC system. Um, the question now becomes, how do we better optimize the systems and how do we make designers more aware of these decisions earlier in the design process? We look at another case study 
looking at a three-story medium office building. This is kind of our reference, the typical Department of Energy three-story medium office building, which we're going to be using throughout this presentation. We, we selected three different HVAC system options for this um, prototypical building, the VAV system, fan coils, and VRF, variable refrigerant flow system, right? In this slide, we're just comparing the riser area required. How much area do we need in the core to support these three HVAC systems? And you can see at the bottom, you know, we move from a VAV system that requires almost 20 square meters of shaft space just for the air to something that's more like 3.3 uh, square meters of shaft space for the air. Uh, this just goes to show you, I mean, this is a almost a significant variation between these systems, um, just in terms of the spatial requirements um, in a plant that we're looking at. If we consider the impact that it has on the architectural layout of the space in terms of floor to floor heights, we also notice that there's a significant difference between these systems. If we pick an all air system such as a VAV, you'll see that towards the corridor, we are a little bit constrained by our ceiling height. If we go to an uh, a hydronic system such as the fan coil units or the VRF system, we can have a little bit higher ceiling heights in our space. So these case studies motivate this idea that the design decisions, the, the building system decisions that we make have a significant impact on the area requirements for our building, as well as the actual assembly of our spaces and what goes inside our buildings. So to kind of summarize it up, we know that building systems can take up 30% or more of the building floor area. Um, this was motivated by that case study of a class A office building. I think this applies to a lot of different other building programs as well. We've also identified that current, current early stage design tools do not adequately allow designers to play around with different system options and to visualize the impacts that these systems have within their space. And finally, we know that building system selection has an incredibly important impact on the performative and financial metrics associated with our building. Uh, so combining all these three main topics together, we were motivated that there need, really needs to be a tool in the early stage design process that addresses some of these concerns and helps designers have some sort of estimate or understanding of building systems within their space earlier rather than when it's too late in the design process. So we're going to, for the purpose of this presentation and the current stage of the tool, we're only focusing on HVAC. Um, so the heating and cooling elements inside our building. It, we are aware that building systems also include egress stairs, vertical transportation, and these are things we hope to layer into the tool in the future as we continue its development. So we, we're starting off our discussion of the build back workflows with a design exercise uh, that an architect may, may have to answer. Which system do we want to choose? This may be a decision for the mechanical consultant. This tool is not designed to replace the mechanical consultant or the typical MEP workflows that exist in the design process. What we want to do is enable designers and give them the understanding to be able to compare these systems early on and to have an informed discussion with their mechanical consultants in practice and to have a better understanding of what these systems mean in terms of performance and space requirements in the architectural education. So if we have a design exercise where we have to choose between these three systems, the baseline system, the VAV, that's kind of the traditional approach that a lot of consultants defer to, an air optimized system, fan core units, where we decouple the breathing air requirements from the actual space conditioning and thereby have some energy savings, or the all electric solution, which is um, our anticipation of a cleaner grid in the future and not having any combustion on site, what would that system look like? So that would be the VRF system that we're proposing. So each of these systems has its pros and cons in terms of performance, but also has a significant impact uh, on terms of the space requirements needed to accommodate these systems within our building. So we want to help designers understand, be able to compare these systems and make an informed decision to what goes best within their building. This brings us to the build back workflow and the tool sets that we're, uh, we're supporting. 
Um, and the build, build back workflow, it comprises of three current modules or three kind of tool sets. The first is a survey that we've used and will continue to develop where we gauge the interests and needs of the industry and from architectural practitioners as well as educators for us to understand what is currently needed in the build back tool, what is currently needed to enhance early stage uh, education and understanding for designers with regards to building systems. The build back workflow also includes a spreadsheet, so an area requirements matrix. This is kind of our first level of introducing designers to building systems without be becoming too involved in the modeling process. We have a follow-up, a more detailed analysis in our scripts that we're providing where designers can actually perform an energy analysis of, their system, of the chosen system for their building and then visualize the different HVAC systems that they can have inside the system. So moving from step one, the survey gauging the uh, the industry and educational needs, all the way to a dedicated energy modeling and HVAC simulation workflow. And it, within this way, we're kind of able to target different stages of the design process and different levels of understanding and involvement that students or practitioners need with regards to building systems. So I'm going to um, talk through the modules a little bit or the workflows a little bit before um, I move to the tutorial and introduce the website. So the first, as we started to develop build back and to and for us to better understand what we really need, we designed a survey to be shared with both sustainability analysts and architects in practice. We wanted to understand how these um, how these disciplines interact with HVC engineers, how effective this design integration is, and how it can be improved in the future. What are the stumbling blocks? What are the, the limitations in the current workflow? And how could a tool in the future help to alleviate some of these problems that we have? We have uh, shared these results, and uh, we have shared this survey with um, some industry pr practitioners. This survey is available on the Build Back GitHub. So if you would like to share this with contacts that you have in industry or in your firms, that would be appreciated. Any feedback that we get is very valuable to us. The first real workflow that we're going to demonstrate today is in terms of the area requirement matrix. And we, we, we wanted to address the earliest stage in the design process when an architect has just a building massing model and is interested in getting a first order estimate of building systems and how much area they comprise in the building. So we developed this Excel spreadsheet where the user has to only input the, the bare minimum in terms of project information, gross floor area, area per floor, and the floor to floor height. We believe these are, you know, metrics or values that you know will have very early on in the design process before any more detailed design goes on and with those small inputs the user will be able to see the area requirements for MEP systems including you know the central fan room requirements the basement uh, area requirements for equipment uh, vertical transportation requirements as well as egress stair requirements this is summarized in an Excel spreadsheet and can be linked to a very simple massing model to show designers very early on, this is what area you need for your building. Some of it, you know, is not optional. You need your elevators and you need your stairs, and then you have some options in terms of your mechanical system. So this gives you a high level estimate of the area requirements and can be used for programming for exercises early in the design process as as the architects are laying out their spaces and understanding the link between spaces in their building. The more refined or advanced form of this um, comes about when the designer has a more developed model or has a developed thermal model that they want to run energy analysis on. So from, from this point on, the workflow is in parallel with an energy modeling efforts. So if the students or if the class is geared towards developing an energy model, this plugs in very well into the HVAC workflow. Um, the third part of the workflow is called the HVACR tool, and it's a spatial design tool built out in Grasshopper. It interfaces with current Climate Studio energy modeling workflows. Um, so it's 
it's really a two for one deal. You get an energy model and you get the HVAC layout um, options for your space. And this Grasshopper tool has a series of inputs, which I'll demonstrate very shortly, including the building geometry, where our windows are, uh, shading geometry, characteristics of the building, uh, such as the template. These dictate the internal loads, the construction of the material, very much so like an energy model, right? So we're, we're basically laying out the foundations to have a successful thermal energy model um, for our building and then layering on HVAC design into it. And the tool, the HVACer tool, outputs for us not only performance metrics such as energy use efficient, uh, energy use intensity, um, carbon metrics, but also the actual geometry of the ductwork within our space. So the designers can understand how these elements of the HVAC system actually look like within a building. So not some abstract number or value we're dealing with, but the actual ductwork within the space. This was layered into an exercise um, in the fall semester where we gave students in the class um, kind of tasks, which I'll, I will review in the software tutorial. And the, the students in the class developed a series of performance metrics for the different HVAC systems they, they considered. They were able to lay out the HVAC system within their space and do a detailed design by moving and modifying the geometry of the HVAC system to account for ceiling heights, actual plant space, program area that they have within the building. And these are just some results that demonstrate, you know, the, this tool can handle very complex geometries. And if the energy model is, uh, is something that can be run and it's defined properly, then we get the HVAC system options as well represented visually for the designers to interact with and modify for their specific building design. 